Hello world, today we have an interesting and totally not divisive topic. So Meta and Twitter have purged hundreds of accounts apparently spreading pro-Western propaganda. This follows a report which has only just blown the lid on a five year long pro-Western covert influence operation. In other words, bot accounts on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram promoting pro-Western political narratives. This is quite remarkable because whilst we're used to hearing about Russian or Chinese bot armies, this is the very first time a pro-Western influence campaign has been discovered on social media. Apparently we have a clone army too. So this influence operation targeted Asia and the Middle East, with the bots posting about political issues relevant to those areas. One bot, for example, was observed promoting the narrative that the US is helping Tajikistan secure its border with Afghanistan. And this other one promotes the US as a source of stability in Asia. Also, bots apparently love memes just as much as the rest of us, with one account posting an image of an Iraqi politician with IS militants dancing on his shoulders, and another meme pushed the idea that Putin doesn't care about minorities. Not very spicy memes, IMO. I find when the main purpose behind a meme is to push a political narrative, there doesn't tend to be much meme magic. On occasion, the accounts would take a break from posting about politics and try to cover their tracks, camouflaging the facts that they're bots by posting random cat pictures. What's notable about this operation is its sheer scale, or, well, lack thereof. It comprised of just 200 bots, which really doesn't sound like much, and it raises the question, how do we know that these are bots and not just random real people who just so happen to like Western policies? Well, the researchers split the accounts into groups, based on the geographical areas that they were trying to influence, and plotted their posts per day on the different social media platforms. The purple bars here represent Instagram posts, and you can clearly see all the different groups switched to focusing on Instagram literally on the same day earlier this year, suggesting that the accounts are all controlled by one single entity. Things get even more interesting when you look at a breakdown of when the accounts actually post. This chart shows the second of the minute that the accounts posted. If there were real people behind these accounts, you'd expect this to be random and evenly distributed. However, we can clearly see that the accounts almost always post exactly on the minute, suggesting that the posts are automated. Also, the profile pictures of the bots often used faces generated by neural networks, which is pretty easy to discern because if you overlay the photos, the eyes of all the different pictures align, a common trait of AI-generated faces. On top of that, in one profile picture, the guy's ear looks kind of weird and malformed, and the background looks kind of trippy and unintelligible. Again, a clear sign that the picture was generated by an AI. However, the whole campaign seems to have been not very effective, with the report detailing that the vast majority of posts and tweets they reviewed received no more than just a handful of likes and retweets, and only 19% of the COVID assets they identified had more than 1,000 followers. So perhaps this whole operation was done by intelligence agencies testing the water, a precursor to a larger operation. Or maybe we're suffering from a bit of survivorship bias by even labeling this campaign as only comprising of 200 accounts, and that the accounts uncovered are just the tip of the iceberg and a lot more bots have gone undiscovered. The report explains that the methodology used by the bots of posing as independent media outlets, using memes, short form videos and so on, are extremely similar to bot campaigns run by China and Russia. So could this operation be in fact run by them as an experiment to see how well a pro-Western bot campaign could perform? Or is this just Western intelligence agencies learning from the operations of their adversaries? Neither Twitter or Meta publicly attributed the campaign to any particular organization, but Twitter listed the activity's presumptive countries of origin as the US and Great Britain, while Meta said the country of origin was the US. I'm sure you guys have a lot to say on this topic, so make sure to let me know what you think down in the comments. And I'll of course link the full report by Grafica and Stanford in the description. Next up, a white hat hacker has come up with a new way of stealing data from Airgap's computers. Airgap's meaning computers disconnected from the internet for security reasons, like in power stations or military bases. For this new technique to work, malware would have to first be installed on the Airgap's PC, though after which it would encode the target files for exfiltration, then it would transmit them as ultrasonic sound waves using the computer's speakers. A malicious phone sitting nearby would then record these ultrasonic waves, not using its microphone, but rather its gyroscope. 
The whole idea is that the ultrasonic waves are transmitted in the resonance frequencies of MEMS gyroscopes. These are the kinds of gyroscopes used in modern phones. When the gyroscopes are exposed to these resonance frequencies, they'll vibrate to the point where there are errors in their output. Malware on the phone can record these errors, decoding the data, which results in the target files. This is all done silently, at least as far as the human ear is concerned. Coincidentally, the topic of resonance frequencies did actually come up in my previous video, but as a quick reminder, these are the particular frequencies at which an object vibrates at its highest amplitude. This principle can be used by an opera singer to break a glass with their voice. But this raises the question, why not just use a phone's microphone to record the audio? It sounds a lot easier, and it would be. But for this technique to work, it needs to use the phone of an unwitting employee via a malicious app or by visiting a certain website, as websites can actually interface with the gyroscope using JavaScript. The benefit of using a phone's gyroscope is that gyroscopic data is considered safe. Whilst you might think twice about letting an app have access to your microphone or camera, you probably wouldn't think twice about letting an app know your orientation. In a proof of concept video, the string top secret is transmitted to a nearby phone. The maximum range here is about six meters, which does actually seem pretty good, but there are downsides. This technique transmits at one byte per second, meaning a two megabyte PDF would take 555 hours to transmit. That's 23 days. And this theoretical bitrate would be a lot less IRL because an employee's phone isn't going to be sitting next to the victim PC 24 seven, assuming it's even allowed in the air gaps environment at all. The security researcher behind the paper detailing this new technique, one Mordecai Guri, has an array of papers all on different ways of exfiltrating data from air gap systems. I actually covered one of his other papers recently where he repurposes a SATA cable in a victim PC to act as an antenna. But a common critique of virtually all of these different methods are that they don't solve the problem of getting malware onto the AirGaps PC in the first place. And in this case, in his latest paper, malware would also have to exist on an employee's phone. And then there's the assumption that the target PC even has speakers. At the same time as publishing this paper, he also released research on exfiltrating data using LEDs on an ethernet port, signaling encoded files to a hacked CCTV camera. I'll leave links for that, as well as for his other research in the description. This video was made possible by PlexTrack, the cybersecurity reporting and workflow management platform that empowers continuous assessment and effective collaboration between teams to ensure you win the right security battles. Create assessment reports in half the time and collaborate throughout the remediation lifecycle. Centralize your remediation efforts across all scans, assessments, and audits with powerful risk visualizations, scanner and ticketing integrations, and enhanced analytics communicates risks clearly across your team and in real time, working more efficiently and effectively with PlexTrack. You can claim your free month of the PlexTrack platform exclusively for Satonic viewers using the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching. Sources can of course be found in the video description and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.